Good morning, and welcome to Walk in the Spirit, a series of lessons from the book of Galatians. So, the title of this message is Paul's Defense of His Authority, and it is found in Galatians chapter number 1, verses 11 through 24. While you're turning there, I will go through a review. The Apostle Paul wrote this book to promote walking in the Holy Spirit and living a life trusting only in God for salvation. Christ paid our sin debt so that we might be saved, demanding nothing from us to earn or secure our salvation. However, God does desire us to glorify Him in all that we do. And then we ought to know the truth of God's Word and stay firm in it. So, let us now begin in Galatians chapter 11, Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 through 24. The Bible reads, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past, in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceeding zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, and I pray that you'd bless this time. May it be for your honor and glory. Work in this as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, We'll start off with point number one being Paul's defense of his apostleship. So in verses 11 and 12 you see, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So an apostle is sent forth by God. They're sent out by God. Now you might ask, are missionaries and evangelists today apostles? I myself had that same question coming into studying this. And like you ought to do if you don't understand something, you ought to look in the Word of God and see what it says. And if you still don't understand it, seek godly counsel or in godly wisdom. And I did that, and I sought out Pastor Knopp. So I will give you a quote from Pastor Knopp on this. The word apostolos just means one who is sent. Paul indicates that his apostleship came to him because he saw the Lord and received his message from him. And Peter says that, that is the qualification for Judas' replacement. 
In other words, the apostles of the Lamb, Revelation 21, 14, are those who were personally deputized and authorized by Jesus. But we also see the usage of apostle in Acts 14:14 14, 14, and see that it is given to Barnabas and Paul equally, thus leading us to conclude that these men were sent out were sent by Christ under the authority of his church. There are many of these kind of sent men. We use the terms missionary and evangelist to avoid confusion as there is a distinct difference in the authority given to those who were sent in the first century by Christ personally and those who are sent afterward by his church. And that really helps, in my opinion, to show that there is that difference between the people that were going out in the first century that were distinctly and directly called by Jesus and those that are called out today, missionaries and evangelists and others by the church. So in those verses, you see Paul also defending the fact that he didn't get it from any person and he wasn't taught it, but he received it from God. Paul did not get this from any man, but from God. Paul did not get it from the apostles. You see uh, that later in the verses, but it says, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. And he goes on to explain that in greater detail. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, Paul wasn't taught this, except by God. So he couldn't have received it from the apostles if he was telling the truth. And it says in the later verses, in verse 17, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. So he didn't go to the apostles when he got saved. He went into Arabia. And he served the Lord in Arabia. And that kind of lets you know that he didn't need their validation. He needed God's validation. And that... He was kind of setting himself apart, saying that he did receive it from God and that he doesn't really, he shouldn't have to defend his authority. It should be known. But these Galatians, they question his authority, and so Paul is giving them a defense of it. And Paul did not try or did not deny that he had contact with some of the apostles. And he had a short amount of time with Peter. Fifteen days to be exact. Now, I don't know how many of you have gone to like a crash course in something that's like a week-long uh, seminar, things like that where you're supposed to learn all about a subject in one week's time, and it's supposed to be the equivalent of like a college credit or enough to get a license in something. Well, you don't know, well, if you haven't, you don't uh, remember everything from that. You actually miss a lot because you can't uh, process it all. And that's an issue. When you have been taught to save someone's life as a lifeguard and it's a one-week crash course and you don't remember that, everything about it, that's an issue. So Paul, if he would have been taught by Peter in a one-week uh, or a two-week crash course, 
it would have been very detrimental to the faith because Paul would have probably forgotten something and he would have not been showing forth God as he ought to have been. Now, God can work in all situations. He can work things for his honor and glory. But God didn't want it to be uh, said that Paul was taught by Peter. Rather, Paul was taught by God and was shown by God what he was to say. And Peter, it's interesting to look at. Him and Paul's relationship, it, in that 15 days, it has a lot of rockiness. Because Paul calls out Peter on what Peter is doing that isn't right, that isn't godly, and he calls him out on it. And that happened in those 15 days. And Paul, he, uh, that would have been one of the only contacts with the uh, apostles that he had had up until the point that he is talking here. So you have that he was busy in the ministry even before he would have seen Peter. And Paul, he lets the Galatians know this, that he couldn't have received all the doctrine of the Word of God in 15 days from Peter. And he also lets, kind of lets them know that it was from God. That's all that matters. We, as Christians, we have the Word of God here. We have the Holy Spirit working within us. Now, we don't have the same authority as Paul, but we do have authority to go out and witness to the lost and see them saved. The Word of God gives us that, and the Holy Spirit empowers us to do that. We ought to go out and witness to the lost. Tell them about Jesus who died for their sins. And witness to them and let them know that God wants them to be saved. They just have to accept the free gift of salvation. Works will not get you to heaven, and Paul is combating that throughout the book of Galatians. But in this portion of scripture, he's kind of taking, putting that on a back burner because he's got to show himself as having authority because if you don't say that someone has authority, you're not going to accept their teaching. So Paul has to rectify that to begin with so that they will accept the teaching of this book. Verse 17, it says, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went unto Arabia and returned unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other apostles of the apostles saw I none save James the Lord's brother. And Paul, he didn't see any of the apostles for three years. And he is trying to make a point that he learned it from God, not from man. He wasn't taught it by man. He was taught it by God. And you might not think that's important. But it is. Because his authority rests in God, not in man. Our authority as Christians rests in God. And by his word, we can see the lost saved. And by the Holy Spirit working in us and empowering us, we can see the lost saved. We can witness the lost. We can see the saved edified to help them to glorify God and to help them to serve and help them to see the lost saved. It's possible. But we got to trust in the Lord. We got to look to the Lord. And Paul, he's trying to point that out here, that 
They're looking to him as if he's from man. But his knowledge was from man. It's not that way. His knowledge was from God. And he also points out his reformation by God. So our second point is Paul's reformation by God. And this is found in verses 13 through 16. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, and uh, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being made extremely zealous of the traditions of my father. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So that last part, that he did not confer with flesh and blood, is a reiteration of the fact that he didn't get it by man. Paul's knowledge of God did not come from man. It came from God. And Paul, he uses his experience to show the Galatians that being a great Jew will not get you to heaven. And that God did a work in his life, and that's where he gets his authority. So, before Paul was saved, he was a great Jew in the standards. He persecuted Christians because they were heretics, according to the Jewish people. They were not living the life a Jew should, according to the Jews. And Paul would go out and kill them, either directly or indirectly. Paul killed a great amount of Christians. And that is so sad. He thought he was doing good. He thought he was doing what the Lord wanted. And yet, he was amiss. He was wrong. The Lord wanted him to be saved. And by the grace of God, Paul was miraculously saved and went from being a killer of Christians to being a proponent uh, for God a witness for God throughout a lot of the world. And praise the Lord for that. It's amazing what God can do in your life. God is all-powerful. You might say, I don't necessarily believe that. I don't necessarily see that. Well, you're wrong. God is all-powerful. He can do a great work, you got to trust in him and do what he has for you. And you can see God do great things. I believe that we can see revival in America. I believe it's possible. And I believe that we can see our nation turn back to God. I believe that. God's all-powerful. He can do it. He can use us Christians to witness to the lost and to spread the word of God to the unsaved that are dying and going to hell so that they no longer are on that path, so that they are saved by the grace of God. The lost need to be saved. And Paul, he killed a lot of Christians. And a lot of Christians probably wouldn't have trusted him. And yet, God greatly used him. Paul then moves back towards his defense. He persecuted the church of God. He wasted it. And he was extremely zealous about tradition. But he was wrong. God showed him that when Paul got saved. And Paul's defense is that God 
separated Paul out to serve him. And you see that in verse 15 and 16. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. God separated Paul out to serve him. And you know, God can separate you out to serve him. Not in the same way as how he did with Paul, but he can give you a burden for the lost. He can help you to reach the lost. Now, you might not know what the Lord has for your life. And if you're a true Christian, that is perfectly okay. You just got to trust in him and go wherever he leads you. Some people, though, God says, you need to go here. You need to preach my word here. And if God has said that to you, if God has put that up in your heart, if God has put a place on your heart that you're supposed to go, do it. Because God has a plan. Paul could have rejected salvation from God, but he did not and was saved. And we as Christians, we ought not to reject what God has for us. But if you're unsaved, you are rejecting what God has from, for you. And if you're unsaved, you need to be saved. You need to be saved from your sin. And you are, unsaved person, on a road that you will not like the end of. It ends in suffering and torment. You do not want that. Be saved. Look unto Jesus. God is good, and by God's mercy, grace, and love, if you call upon the name of the Lord for salvation, you will be saved. And then, the passage of Scripture here caps off with an amazing thing. God is glorified. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. And... Praise the Lord for that. God was glorified by the fact that Paul got miraculously saved and he went from persecuting Christians to seeing people become Christians. Praise the Lord for that. And in verse 16, the Bible says, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Paul, in this, he's reiterating his call to see the lost saved. And you're seeing that God is glorified by Paul seeing the lost saved. Paul went and became a part of the church at Antioch of Syria. And that is, you see in verse one, uh, 21, after I came into the regions of of Syria and Cilicia. So Paul, he joined himself with that church. Now, I don't specifically know when, and I believe that there are a lot of things about the Apostle Paul that we don't know. And I do not necessarily need to know the dates. I know that what the Bible says is true, and my goal, and it should be your goal, is to glorify God. Geographically, Cilicia was close to Antioch of Syria. Now, they might not have thought so back in that day, but 
given my best uh, guess and research, it would have probably been about 50 miles. And while that's a bit of a distance to walk, it is doable. And you've seen in history that the Greeks, they would uh, sometimes run 30 miles. So uh, messengers would at least. And so you know that it would have been doable to uh, travel in that region. Today it would have been like a half hour car drive. But back then, it would have been hours, if not a uh, day. But Paul began to minister up there in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. And the Christians in Judea found out about that. They did not know Paul by his face, but they knew that he had killed Christians and that he had turned from that to preach Christ. Now, there probably were some Christians that rejected Paul's authority because he had killed Christians. They might have had someone close to them that was killed by Paul. And that would have been a difficult situation to overcome. But... God's Word working in their lives and the Holy Spirit working in their lives made it possible. And we don't necessarily know of any situation like that uh, particularly, but it could have happened. And people could have doubted Paul's authority because of that. But you see that the churches in Judea, they got the right mindset. They were focused on glorifying God. And they focused on the fact, Paul, who killed Christians, is now seeing the law saved. Praise the Lord! Give glory to God in that. And you might think, oh, there's wicked people out there. They don't deserve salvation. No, they don't. But God desires them to be saved. And who knows? You might have witness to someone, and you might witness to someone that you believe doesn't uh, deserve salvation. But salvation is a gift. And it is not for us to decide who gets saved and who doesn't. God allows everyone to decide whether they get saved or don't. God's salvation is given to all, but not all will accept it. So, you might witness to someone that they're really, really bad sort of person. God can use them if they get saved. They can be a great witness for God. You don't know. This tie here, it's got a story. And a guy that was a Christian committed a crime and got punished for it. He got put in an area that was way worse than what he should have been put in, from what I understand. And he got to witness to crime bosses that the average person wouldn't have been able to witness to. And I don't know if any of them got saved. I do know that there was one that was saved uh, when I was out that way. And I don't know if that guy had an effect on that guy's salvation and him getting saved. I don't know. But I do know this. God worked in that man. His situation wasn't good. He messed up. God still used him. And the crime boss that got saved, I don't know if it was related to that guy, but the crime boss, he is a witness for God. And he opened up an area that was not open for Christians. They would have been in great danger. That guy opened the door for them to be able to witness there. 
And you might be like, what? We might not understand what God has, but God has a plan. He opens doors that he wants open, and he closes doors he wants closed. He does it for his honor and glory. And we ought to seek to give God honor and glory. And we as Christians, we ought to seek to see the lost saved, and that gives God honor and glory. And we ought to see the saved edified so that they work to see God honored and glorified in their lives and in everything that they do. So, for you that are watching this, have you accepted Christ's free gift of salvation? Not your mom, not your dad, not your sister, not your brother. Have you accepted God's free gift of salvation? It is free. You cannot earn it, and you don't deserve it. But God has given it to you. You just got to take it. You just got to believe on the Lord, call upon him for salvation from your sins, and let Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross cover your sins. Jesus paid our sin debt. We didn't deserve that. We can't do anything to earn it. If you are unsaved, be saved today. God wants you to be saved. Be saved. Christian, are you letting this lost, sin-sick world know about the salvation of the Lord? If not, you need to do that. God has done a great work in your life, and that is you are saved. We as Christians, we are saved. Let God be praised for that. Show it to the lost. Let them know we are Christians. We are followers of God. We seek to give God glory in everything that we do. Let God be glorified because the unsaved are saved. Christian, glorify God in all that you do. Seek to please him. Know the word of God. Let the Holy Spirit work in your life so you're sinning less and less and less. You will never be able to achieve sinless perfection. And if you're unsaved and you're trying to achieve that, to be saved, that ain't going to work. But Christian, know what God wants. Give him glory and seek to see the lost saved. But you know what? Christian, that will not happen. That will not happen unless your life is centered around God and you are walking in the Spirit.